B1. Right engine fire. Rotate 17. Confirm that's a right engine fire. Chris's brain first notices the alarm. His nervous system responds immediately. It sends commands to the muscles handling the controls. A moment later, the adrenal hormones surge through their bodies. A trained pilot looks cool, but he can't control the inner torrent of hormones. Breathing gets faster and deeper, providing more oxygen. Chris's pupils dilate to improve his eyesight. Saliva and mucus dry up, increasing the size of the passages to his lungs. His heart beats faster, providing more blood for the brain and muscles. Increased perspiration cools his body. His muscles tense and tighten, preparing for rapid or vigorous movements. Low priority functions like digesting food are postponed to conserve energy. And the remaining bottle has been fired. Even his blood has been altered. It is now more efficient at fighting infection and would clot more quickly. Chris's blood has been packed with adrenaline and noradrenaline through the whole simulated emergency. But as soon as the tension passes, the hormones are broken down. Within 10 minutes, their levels are back to normal. Jess at uh, one, two, three. Confirm we have uh, no visual outside fire and the fire trucks on the way. Even before we're born, hormones are beginning to structure our lives. This nine-week-old fetus, seen inside its mother with an ultrasound scan, is tossing and turning under the influence of the wake-up hormone, cortisol. Hormones sculpt our most basic characteristics. If a child is genetically coded to become a boy, its testes start to produce testosterone, which directs the growth of the male sex organs. Without testosterone, the genitals would develop into female sex organs, and every fetus would become a girl. Everyone would be female. After 15 weeks, the baby's thyroid gland starts to pump out another vital hormone. Thyroxine makes sure that all the child's organs are growing at the proper rate. In very young children, thyroxine controls the growth of nerve cells. But in all of us, it has another task. It sets the rate at which we turn food into new body tissue. Each day, the average adult body has to renew about half a pound of muscle and tissue. We all have different levels of thyroxine, so some are better at turning food into body tissue than others. Thyroxine is another fairly simple molecule with a role out of proportion to its size. It determines the rate we burn up the body's reserves of fat and how efficiently we use the food we consume. It's also our thermostat, keeping our bodies at a constant temperature. During their stressful four hours in the simulator, Chris and Tim used up a lot more energy and wore out more body cells than usual. Now that the tension has gone, their energy must be replaced. Their bodies need food and liquid to repair all the wear and tear. They feel thirsty and hungry. Overall, the detail went very well. Um, just two points I want to comment on, Chris. Um, 
The brain, in particular, feels the strain. It's fueled by blood sugar, called glucose, dissolved in the bloodstream. Glucose is a source of instant energy for all parts of the body, but it's the only food the brain can use. When blood sugar runs low, we feel tired and faint. When body chemicals are out of balance, it's another job for the hormone system. This time, the pancreas swings into action. It sends instructions to its larger neighbor, the liver, the storehouse of the body's spare sugar. After we've eaten, levels of blood sugar go up. The pancreas pours out insulin. This hormone instructs the liver to remove sugar from the blood and store it for later use. Between meals, the blood sugar falls. The pancreas turns down the insulin supply and steps up the flow of a second hormone, glucagon. It's virtually the opposite of insulin. Under the influence of glucagon, the liver puts sugar back into the blood. Glucagon is a far smaller molecule than insulin, but it's just as active. These two hormones balance each other on the end of a chemical seesaw, as they control the amount of glucose in our blood. They also cope miraculously well with the strange and complex mixture of chemicals that we inflict on our digestive systems.